like that. I'm Ben from Indoor Organics. Um, we're basically an organic specialist grow shop. Um, started by just making our own specialist organic living soils and expanded out from there to sort of do all the individual amendments for it as well as the accessories, the beds, the pots, watering cans, sprays and that sort of thing. Um, we're basically just trying to help people who want to grow you know, real organic products and real organic soil and hopefully throughout this video we can teach people a little bit more what that's about and, and why you would do that. What do we do? So basically, indoor organics, what we're trying to do is we're trying to kind of be like a one-stop shop in effect for anybody who kind of wants to get into what we're doing, um, which is, you know, trying to grow. It doesn't matter what you're trying to grow, but you're just trying, you understand the benefits of organics, right, I guess, initially, to be fair. You understand, you know, why you want to grow that way, be it, be it because it's just a case of you're chasing flavors or you're chasing aromas or you're chasing a, a certain look in, in your flowers or whatever it is, or be it because you want it for nutrient density or the fact that you don't want the pesticides and the synthetics using it. So those are the sort of the reasons why you get into this game really. So when I started first started trying to, you know, find soil and products, it wasn't available. So that's kind of what happened to us. We developed it for ourselves and did it for ourselves. And when we realized it wasn't available to anyone else, well, why not just make it available to everybody else then? So initially it was just the soil blends that we did, but then it was a case of well, why not offer all the individual things we use to make the soil. And then if we've given them the soil mix, well, why not now help them with the things to go with that, be it the containers and you know the beds or the watering cans or the sprays or you know, press control and those. And we've just expanded around that, but just to very much focus is just in that area. You know, we're not interested in the general sort of hydro shop equipment. We're not gen interested in the general sort of garden center style stuff. We are very specific. Um, and that's it, we just kind of, as we go, we try and test everything ourselves. And if it's proven and we use it ourselves then we offer it to somebody else. I'd always been a grower for a long, long time. And I'd used all the current methods. You know, I'd done hydro systems, I've done cocoa systems, I've done organic soil and bottled nutrients, you know, and to reasonable success. It wasn't until I learned that you can have a soil system in place that you never have to replace, you don't have to dump root balls, you haven't got all that ball ache, yet you can still produce fantastic yield and the higher quality than you've ever seen. Like what more, more do you want? And I was like that that was that's what that's what got me into it, just the simple fact that you're not bringing things in and out anymore. All your waste material gets recycled into your soil. So it's just the simplicity of it. And then when that goes with the fact that it's obviously always gonna be better than anything you can do synthetically and when you see the results yourself and at that point you're like ah, just, there's no turning back if you want to learn to grow these days who do you ask you've got a grow shop you've got a few books and you've got the internet but back in the day we didn't have the internet and there wasn't really many books and there wasn't really many grow shops none of us went to ask our nan and our granddad on the allotment how are you growing the beds how are you going to know teach you about compost yeah and that's what we really should have learned. But because we didn't, we learned the lab-based way, the chemical industry way, which is actually, you can do it by extracting these minerals and mixing with salts and water and feeding it direct to the plant and you grow a plant. And we haven't got to rely on, you know, nature, aren't we clever? But, and it, you'll get somewhere. But like I said, that's when you go through all those processes and you have the floods from your hydro systems. And like I said, you have the ball like throwing medium away when you're running medium. So it was all I was, I was, I was on a podcast, someone come onto it, and he was an outdoor grower in NorCal, been an outdoor grower forever, and they don't have grow shops in NorCal, right, so they've got to use what they're around them, plants and animal waste and whatever else. But they had a fire, lost his entire outdoor crop, and he decided, I need to pay the rent, what am I going to do? So he built some boxes indoors, filled them with outdoor soil like he would outdoors indoors, put, went on his podcast, explained about it, Put a few pictures up on the internet and it stuck. So once I saw that, when I heard about that, that he'd never thrown away that soil and he was growing these crops indoors that were just, as far as I could see, were just as good as anything you can do outdoors in a greenhouse. And he was, it was so cost effective because he didn't have to buy nutrients and he wasn't throwing anything away each time. And he also explained how the soil got better and better and better each time, so his yield increased each time. So that's kind of where it came from, just that, that first thing. I must have been 2014, I think, when I first saw that. 
And that was the first thing that kind of thought, okay, right. And then you get on the internet and you find out people are discussing this. It's forum boards and the people are clacking us coots and mountain organics and we're trying to suss out uh, what is the ideal soil mix and what are the inputs and the ratios. And that went on for two or three years on the internet. You see, just trying to just discuss and work and trial and play. And then that's when I finally got into actually trying to source the inputs myself here. So, okay, or organic living soil, Google, nothing. <laughs> Kelp meal, uh, nothing, new milk, nothing. So it's like, well, where did where do we start? So that was the first challenge. Even before we had the recipe and had an understanding of what we were trying to make, where do we go to find this stuff? And then when you do find kelp, there's seven different options. You bring them all in and they all look different, they all smell different, and which is the right one to go with. So you have to understand, well, what am I trying to get from this? What am I looking for to make this the right, the better product than that one? And actually go through the process of actually saying, I can't use that because that's been processed a certain way. Or I can't use that because it's been stored a certain way. So it actually takes a lot of effort just to get to the point where you can collect the inputs to build the recipe and then actually make a mix. So that's what we did in a flat, in a tray, in literally stinking out the house sort of thing, doing it in a very small scale for ourselves. And then when we realized it worked and we saw the benefits from it, we were like, okay, let's expand this. Got a garden, we moved to the next house. Then we got an allotment so we could go a bit bigger. Then we had a bit more space indoors, we could do more space indoors. But then same situation when I heard about malted barley powder or when you hear about something else and you hear the benefits, can't find it. Okay, right. So it got to the point where you've actually done all the work to source all this and, and kind of put it in one place for yourself. But as we all know, you can't just keep something for yourself when you've got something good, you've got to share it with others. And that was the case. Look, let's just build a website. It's a very basic website that we have but just to get an opportunity to have somewhere. So if you search for organic living soil, if you search for no-till, if you search for, you know, that you can now find somewhere which has it all for you, all in one place. And not only that, you can get on the phone to us, you can get on the, you know, email, Instagram, and we'll support you all the way through it. So indoor organics, when it comes to products, you know, we're all about, as the name suggests, you know, organic products for indoor use. Um, naturally they can be used anywhere but we're trying to create this indoor growing system that's based on, based on outdoor systems. So the soil blends they're probably our key offering we feel that helps people the most because you know I've been for it myself I know it's a challenge to try and source all these things and have some space to lay it all out and you know be able to pile it all up and blend it and turn it every couple of days it takes time so you know lots of people still require a premix blend that we can deliver and it's out of the box off you go so that's probably our core offering our soil for life you know, our original blend that we've done for years and we'll, we'll do forever, it's tried and tested and, you know, amendment kits to go with that. Uh, but as part of trying to get out to a wider audience, we really wanted to try and find a way to, you know, develop a soil blend that we could still make by hand, but just on a bigger scale. And that's when we developed our Eco Life. Same kind of thing, it's got a peat base and slightly different inputs, but it does the same job ultimately, but just allows us to sort of make it in a way well, we can make a bit more at a time, so we say, and get out to the public. So that's in collaboration with Eco Thrive, made up at their HQ. Um, there's a product that goes alongside that called Lifecycle, uh, which is basically all the inputs and amendments we put in the soil, just in a little dry amendment mix that you can use to re-amend your soil for long-term use or use for different applications. Um, but yeah, when it comes to just our own specific, our own products that we carry, um, we kind of only really sell things that we feel are going to enhance the system or be part of the system. Um, and the system we're trying to create is, like I said, taking outdoors indoors and create that ecosystem that involves microbes and bugs and the breakdown of organic materials. So um, there's three things really that we would say to go with your soil and that's cover crops, worms and mulching. Those three things together just bring it all together. Cover crop is basically just some sort of non-harvest plant that you also grow in your pots. Um, the main reason for it is because it covers the surface of your soil. If you go out into the forest, into nature, you're not going to find bare soil. There's nearly, we call them weeds, I think we call them in most places. You go to anywhere, there's weeds everywhere. What, what are weeds? Or so weeds, they may not be delivering you food, they may not be delivering you medicine, they may not even have an apparent reason to exist, but they're fixing the soil. Yeah, they're keeping the soil covered. And that's why we're thinking if we're going to try and recreate an ecosystem, we want to kind of do the same kind of thing. So if you look into the forest, yeah, you can have the plants, but then you can have the floor. The floor's covered in leaves, it's covered in new plants growing through, old branches, all sorts. So we want to try and create the same thing. 
and a cover crop does that. So a cover crop recreates that. We use things like clover or barley, or we offer a cover crop mix, which is kind of like a range of grasses. And the reason we use them because they're very fast growing um, and they sort of create that chop and drop system, which we can talk more about later. So soil, pots, your life cycle amendment kit, some sort of cover crop system, then okay, what else can I do? Well, then the next best thing you can do is put some worms in it. Now worms are part of any healthy soil system. They do so much, I could talk about them for ages, um, but by getting them in there, that kind of creates and completes the ecosystem. So along with the worms, along with your cover crops, then we started thinking about, okay, well, what are these worms doing? They, they, they must be doing something. And the key thing they're doing is breaking down all that rotting material. So I think that in the forest that falls off the trees, the leaves, the branches, the stems, it lands on the surface, it starts breaking down and the worms will come and feed on that. Everybody's seen those little worm castings in the fields, you know, that they lay and that's basically the stuff that they've eaten, processed through them and, and been laid out. But what that does, that contains all sorts of really important microbes and bacteria and enzymes that kind of complete that soil system so that when they come and feed on the top, and they eat all these inputs and amendments and they lay all this stuff, you can then go and water that and in effect water that into the soil. So you're kind of creating your own worm bin, your own worm castings. As well as that, we do individual products that are kind of made up in the soil mix. But if you want to try them on their own, then feel free to do that. Uh, the first one is kelp meal. Kelp meal, um, if you're going to ask me, Ben, I want to put something in my garden. Out of all your things, what's the one thing I should go for? and we would choose kelp meal first. It's kind of like the go-to fix. If you've got a deficiency of any sort, kelp meal. If you've got any issues, kelp meal. You can't really overdo it. It contains every single element on a periodic table. So it doesn't matter what you want to try and find, it's going to cover it. You can use it to just top this onto the soil and water it in. You can use it to mix with water and drench. And you can use it to mix with water and foliar. So there's multiple ways you can apply it. Um, and the best thing with it is cost effective. It's a dry powder, it sits there, it never goes off. And when you, like I said, when you want to try and find something that's all in one, it does everything, that is the one. You know, it, it is really, it's really our choice. Um, other than that, the next thing on, probably something like neem. Not many people might have heard of neem, maybe a bit of neem oil that's been around for a little while. Um, neem is a tree. Um, the most reason why we like neem so much is what we call a nutrient accumulator. So it has a unique ability to kind of pull and store nutrients within itself and lock them in. So then when you go and apply this to your soil, you can naturally unrelease all those uh, elements and minerals into your soil. Uh, some of the key things with neem that make it stand out from other things, it has unique properties when it comes to pest resistance. So it can help your plant sort of be more pest resistant in itself. But not only that, it has unique properties in the soil. So when it comes to microbes, you are going to get good and you are going to get bad. Now, naturally, we want to try and encourage the good ones and sort of hold back the bad ones. And that's what neem is very, very good at. Somehow, it has a unique property to suppress pathogenic microbes, but encourage all the beneficial ones. So when we're looking at things we can use in the soil to improve our soil health and to improve our plants, yeah, sure, you can use nutrients and find products that would deliver that, but why not find products that can do this and do this and do this and do this and do this all in one. So that's kelp and neem, they're the two that really do that for you. But then likewise, when we're thinking about, well, okay, what other plants can we find? What other have unique properties? That's when you come across things like aloe vera. Yeah, aloe vera has been known as one of the most medicinal plants for humans and animals since forever, right? You can use it in so many ways. Um, you can use it for cloning, Literally all I do is I soak my root cubes in it, I put some water, I soak my clones in it for 20, 12, 24 hours, they go in the root cubes and you'll probably get rooting just as fast as any commercial rooting agent, but your roots will come up better than anything I've ever seen, you know, and they're immediately ready to interact with an organic living source system because kind of they are, it's plant-based, it's not synthetic-based. So aloe, a magical, magical product, it can be used in a low dosage, so a package goes a long, long way, it's very cost-effective. You can use it for foliar, you can use it for soil drench, um, you can use it regularly, literally every two days if you wanted to. Um, but one of the main benefits is the way it enables a plant to sort of really boost its own health. So within a plant, it has something called a systemic acquired resistance. And this is kind of like an inherent process where if it notices or it detects or it communicated a threat or some sort of issue, it can kind of respond to that and boost it up so it's prepared. 
in order to do that it needs certain you know elements available to create these compounds within itself you see so and that's what aloe is so good for so, so when you either incorporate in your soil mix or use it for a foliar or a soil drench the plant can use all those unique properties so if for example it does get a little bit dry or if there is a pest presence or if there's any sort of stress factor on that plant it can just produce the chemicals it needs to do to sort of make itself extra strong in those areas um, it comes as a powder like i said one teaspoon or half a teaspoon per liter is normally absolutely fine so it, go, it lasts ages it's easy to store um, but yeah these are the sorts of things where if you want to get the the more out of it that's kind of what we're looking a couple of little products a couple of extra tips and tricks to kind of take you from base level to you know really give them a treat from maybe a new someone who's maybe new to living soil maybe they're not ready to jump in fully with you know big pots of living soil eco life and life cycle worms cover crop mulch and like, oh, okay well not quite ready yet but you know let's see what some of this can do for my garden the one thing i would recommend to give you give you a feeling that what you've done you can notice the results right is our malted barley powder it's kind of cover crop the benefits of cover crop in a package shall we say so if we rewind a little bit to say well what is what is what is barley powder where does it come from so malted barley powder is in effect a barley seed and the, the seed has just been allowed to germinate to the point where you just get a little bit of the taproot coming out then it's freeze dried and powdered and the whole point of doing that is because a seed when it's in effect made by its mother has to be given everything it needs for life so like a mother's milk because when that seed first germinates there's not a taproot in the soil at that point there's no leaf material collecting any sunlight it needs everything so that's why cover crops are so effective because when you lay these seeds on your surface your soil and they all germinate they release all these amazing benefits into your soil as part of that germination process and putting their taproot out you see so then we thought okay well is there a way to sort of harness and capture that and people thought well actually yeah if you take that seed and you capture it the way we do as long as you do it in the right way you can lock in all those beneficials and the beneficials have been identified as mostly enzymes and the reason why enzymes are so useful in a soil system is because the microbes are using enzymes they're using enzymes to break down all the raw materials we put into it to make them available for the plant and obviously the microbes can do so much and they're working really really hard for you but let's face it we can always help them out a little bit and that's why if you can take that freeze-dried germinated seed and just apply that to the soil all those enzymes are going to go to work like microbes now naturally we don't like to interfere with the natural processes too much create an imbalance but as long as you're careful and you use dosages as recommended and really all we do is a gentle top like with the mim it's a gentle top dressing on top of the soil and water it in every week um, or if you wanted to mix it with water we normally recommend a tablespoon per gallon um, you won't ever overdo it but what you will see is almost an immediate and instant reaction the plants will show you that they enjoyed that because they now have access to all those little bits of mineral or elements that maybe weren't quite available to them because the micro population wasn't quite strong enough yet in that area um, so it just enables you to sort of just complete that little, you know, that last little 5% of just sort of really the enhancements in the soil. You know, if some people talk about adding CO2 to enhance the knee sort of, that's kind of one of those things. Yeah, okay, if it's going really, really well, but that will allow you to drive that. So that's really one of our, we really, really recommend that product because like I said, it's really easy to use. It's cost effective. You can mix it with water and use it as a drench. You can just dust it on the soil and water it in. Um, but yeah, fantastic product. So let's say you're thinking about getting into living soil. Um, there's a few things to consider first of all. And these are kind of things that we worked out just whilst like playing around really, you know, trial and testing and some things worked, some things didn't, you know, you learn from your failures and then you suss it out. So the first thing is obviously you need the right soil blend, a high quality soil blend is made by people who know what they're doing with the right inputs. And once you've got that, you're most of the way there. The next thing to consider is, um, soil volume so obviously traditionally if you're throwing away soil each time and every time you go to throw it away you realize that maybe you know not all that soil is fully covered in roots you think oh it's a waste right oh, next time i'll use a bit less and i'll use a bit less so over time we've cut our pot sizes down and if you're direct feeding 
you can kind of get away with that, you know, it doesn't need to have so much space. You can kind of grow in a rock wall cube, you know, take on, you know. So, but when it comes to uh, living systems and organics and microbes, you know, it's kind of like a, it's a bit like a fish tank, where if you had a big fish tank with one fish in it, it's going to be really happy for ages. But if you get a little fish tank with loads of fish in it, they're going to get pretty unhappy pretty quickly. So it's just the same kind of thing, right, in any living system. So volume is the key thing before we go anywhere. So when we talk about volume, we probably need to think about two things. One of them is, are you intending or considering to use the soil again in long term? Because if you are, you probably need to have a, a much bigger pot than if you were just going to use it one off. If you're going to use it one off, then you can definitely crunch your pot sizes down, but you're naturally going to have to try and keep your plant size relative. So we say, so you say, okay, I'm going to do single use. Um, I'm only going to grow small plants, you know, small crop plants that, you know, aren't going to have massive nutrient demands, aren't going to get to the point where they're going to drink too much water. Because if you go into too small a pot, the plant just drinks the water too quickly. It's really hard to stay on top of the moisture. As soon as you get wet, dry cycles, you start running into challenges. So that's why we say soil volume is the key. As a, a layman's term, as a minimum, Per meter, shall we say, if you were going to go into pots, we would probably have a minimum of like four or five 15 gallons, 60 litres. So you're probably talking about a minimum of like 200, 250 litres of soil. So this may seem like a lot of soil initially, but if you're never throwing it away, then it's just an investment and it shouldn't really be a problem. Um, obviously, if you have pots you want to bring in and out of your room and that sort of stuff, then naturally size can be a problem. So, you know, bear that in mind but as in a nutshell the best advice we can give is the more soil the better so that's the first thing soil volume if you're going to use it long term go for as much as you can if you can use it single use you can maybe use it a little bit less but bear in mind the smaller you go the more challenges you're going to have and it actually gets harder so as a recommendation the best tip we can give you 15 gallon pot is a minimum four per meter is a minimum and then if you want to reuse it long term you've probably got enough to do that if you really, really want to, you know, get maximum potential, increase your potential yield, and increase the potential the plants can perform at, that's when beds come into, you know, really come into sort of their own. Because when you have a bed, firstly you get to fill in all those gaps around the pots, obviously with soil, so you end up with a larger volume. Um, when the plants are in together, they can start interacting and helping each other and sort of sharing nutrients and protecting each other. So you get the benefits of that. Um, also, a larger body of soil retains moisture a bit easier. So when we're saying about how, you know, when a plant gets big and it starts drinking a bit quicker and it might get a bit harder to keep up with that, whereas a bed, it's just a lot easier to keep it moist. So you know, that's, that's the soil volume. I know it may sound scary to some people to think about putting this much soil in a place. But like I said, if you're not replacing it every time, it's a one-off job and then it's done. When it comes to tips and tricks, when you're considering this, obviously think about if you need to pre-veg plants, because if you want to pre-veg and bring them in, Obviously, there's kind of a limit to the pot size you can move. And 15 gallon is probably about the biggest anybody can move on their own. 30 gallons is movable, but gets a bit awkward. So that's a consideration. The other thing, of course, is when you, if you have a bed and you want to transplant into it, you don't really want to have to dig too much out of it and sort of disturb it too much each time. The whole point of a no-to-a living system is you don't disturb the soil. You keep it undisturbed as much as possible. You can maybe scratch around a little bit if you need to, but you know the, the less the better so if you've got a transplant in each time and you're digging out big you want to try and avoid that so that's these are things to consider and obviously if anybody wants any help with this to feel free to give us a call or contact grow works and we can help you size up the pot size for your application and whether beds are right for your you know or individual pots but the easiest way to sum that up is that if you want the very very best from it you want to use it long term go beds go large volume but at the same time if you just maybe want to have a play have a try Feel free to chuck a little pot in there. As long as you keep the plant small, you're still going to have good results and it will give you some confidence to go on. So that's soil volume. Like I said, that's that's my biggest tip. The next biggest tip when it comes to soil volume and, and why it's linked to soil volume is moisture, watering. Because in a living soil system, the microbes are just like us. They need a certain level of moisture to be able to exist and thrive. And if they get too dry, then naturally they're going to have to, you know, die potentially or more likely just hibernate. Um, so that's why in a living soil system, watering and the way you water is the most important thing. You don't want to have, you know, like a flood 
and sort of dry out period. You don't want it to be wet, dry, wet, dry, wet, dry like this. You want it even. More, maybe when plants are small, you can have it a little bit drier and as they get bigger, you can ramp it up a little bit. So when we're trying to achieve that even moisture, that constant moisture, we're thinking, well, how can we do that? You know, because when you water plants, or when you water soil and you've got lights or sun above it, naturally the top sort of dries a little bit quicker than the bottom. And the tendency is to come along, go, oh, it's dry, I'll water it. And you water it, but then that water just soaks to the bottom. And then the dry gets, top gets dry again, you go, oh, I'll, I'll water it, get it to the bottom. And you go, top gets dry, oh, I'll water it. And get, so before you know it, it's getting wetter and wetter and wetter, and it's getting overlogged and waterlogged from the bottom up. And having too much water or too high moisture level is almost, if not worse, than it being too dry. Because when you have too much moisture, it pushes out the oxygen, uh, the pH drops, and then lots of these uh, elements that are normally available are locked out and you get a full lockout. So too wet is really, really bad. Too dry is really, really bad. Even is perfect. So if you want to try and keep it even and reduce that evaporation, the very easiest way you can do that is with two things, cover crops and mulches. We explained earlier about how these are sort of like our key products along with worms. Um, and the reason why we're using those is because once you get that mulch on top of the soil and the mulch is just another worm for some organic material to go on top of it you know you could use a plastic sheeting if you wanted just to cover off the top of the soil but we obviously want to try and create a system where it's working its way in over time like it would do naturally so we're going to try and find some sort of organic material and one of our favorites is either barley straw or hemp shiv mulch um, Growworks carry our hemp shift mulch because it's our easiest to apply for the average user. It's less messy, but it still does the job of covering off the soil. And then once you cover off the soil, when you water it, it just kind of helps the whole thing stay more evenly moist, longer, shall we say. And then that sort of avoids that wet dry cycle. So that's one of the best tips I can give you. Get, your, get the right soil volume, get your mulch on, and then concentrate on just keeping the watering even. Um, alongside that, as I mentioned, the cover crops. So in any natural system, as I said, you're going to have stuff falling down, decomposing, that's your mulch, but you're going to have new growth coming up and that's your cover crops. So you can use pretty much anything for a cover crop. Um, one of the old favorites has always been clover, but we now offer our cover crop mix, which is a blend of like native UK grasses, the barley, the wheat, the rye, um, some oats, some buckwheat mixed with the clover. And the whole point of that is when you sow that onto your soil, they will all germinate and put their roots down. Every one of those plants will be releasing exudates into the soil, which feed microbes, um, which will enhance your microbial populations. As well as that, when it actually grows up through the, the mulch and becomes apparent, eventually it's going to get a bit long and a bit messy. So you, all you have to do is chop it or press it down. And then what that does, that then dies back into the soil. And in balance with the hemp shiv mulch and the cover crop coming together, that creates kind of like a compost and a composting situation in situ. So that when you're now having that, the worms that you add, which is the third and probably equal most beneficial product and most highly recommended, that comes and feeds on the cover crop that's breaking down and the mulch is breaking down and that's kickstarts that whole ecosystem. So like it would be if you went out into the forest and you scratched around and the leaves that have fallen around, that's where the worms would be. And the worms are coming in there to cycle all the nutrition. So yeah, get the right soil volume, get your mulch down, get your cover crop on, get your worms in it. And that is really, that takes you to 90, 95% potential. You know, you're really going to see amazing results just with that. That'll keep the whole thing going around and around and around and around forever. Um, when it comes to using soil long-term, as mentioned, you need to kind of replace what you take. So providing you use all your waste material, your stalks, your stems, anything you defoliate, anything you prune, anything that's not harvest, shall we say, that all goes back onto the soil. Chuck it straight back on, use it for additional mulch. The worms will break that down, they'll turn it into soil and they'll keep the whole thing going around. Um, you know, it's a water only system when you're using organic living soil. So literally all you need to do, apply, we like to do it with a watering can or with a sprayer so you can try and get like an even coverage, like a rain type effect. Um, there's various irrigation systems you can use as well. But in effect, just that's the only thing we need to master, just the watering system. And then the soil takes care of everything for you. Let's say the, the cob, cob, the mulch, the worms, they bring the ecosystem together. The life cycle amendments, they sort of replace what you take and keep it going around and around forever and ever. And that is really as simple as it needs to be.
Yeah, so out of all the things uh, I sell, aloe, I think it's my favorite. It might just be a personal favorite because I just like it, but there's a reason why I like it is because I use it so much, you know, it's so easy to use cost effective it brings so many benefits like I said you can use it as a wetting agent you can use it for a rooting agent you can use it to boost your plants immune system you can use it for its foliar you can use it as drench you can use it to say it's just yeah it's, it is great really and um, even to the point where I'd say I'd recommend everyone just have a plant at home keep your own plant chop your fillets off and if you can't be able to do that then a little packet of powder <laughs> Yeah, so, um, okay, so yeah, so when it comes to maybe products that we don't sell or that other people do that we feel are really beneficial, um, I think one of the main things we would, we would suggest to people is soil testing. Now, we don't feel that there's a need to do it all the time, um, but it's not even necessarily a need at all. But the reality is when you've been running a soil system, you know, three, four, five, six cycles, it doesn't do any harm just to have a little look and just say, you know, is something creeping up that shouldn't be, or is something getting a bit low that isn't, and on the back of that, therefore, you can tweak your amendment kit to be a bit more specific and just try and keep things in, because you may find certain types of plant or certain varieties, you know, maybe one eats a bit more of something than the other, and therefore, things can come off. Now, you may find, just from basic amending, you can be absolutely fine. But yeah, I just think, actually, something that, if you want, if you're unsure about anything, or, you know, if you've got the budget, hit us up every three, four, five, six cycles. We run a soil test. It's not something we do ourselves, like we said, we have to outsource it for you. We can come back with a report, give you a feedback of where things may need tweaking, and then it just keeps everything just, just perfect all the way through, all the time. Yeah, so I guess the, the biggest news at the moment regarding new products, um, and it's not new, but we're pleased to announce that our Soil for Life, our premium organic living soil blend, the one we've been making since day one, with the very, very best inputs made by hand in small batches at our Indoor Organics HQ, is now going to be available exclusively via Growworks. So you can get in store and pick that up. Um, you can obviously order it along with your other products. Um, and that's for the people that want the best of the best. You know, Eco Life is great, don't get me wrong, but we do for our Soil for Life is just the best of the best. So that's something to look for if you're one of those guys. Um, alongside that, we've released a specialist compost, our supercharged compost. Um, the reason for this is because it's really hard actually to find a compost in the UK. You can Google compost, but you're just going to get a whole wide range of things. Most of it is pretty unreliable. We wouldn't touch any of it to be fair. We only have two sources of compost that we use in our soil for life. Um, so we've basically combined those along with our premium vermicompost, some aeration, and some other premium inputs just to create a compost that you can either use to make your own soil mix with um, or use to top dress on an existing soil mix or to maybe make a compost tea or an extract with if you want to try and inoculate microbes or bring some nutrition into your into your soil. Um, it's probably it probably can be used as an individual standalone soil mix as well if you wanted to um, but to be fair yeah we see that just as a for the people that are looking for compost that's something you can trust. The future for Indoor Organics, obviously we've been going well, seven or eight years now, so we're quite a young company really. Um, I would say our biggest mission is just education. You know, we've got, we've got the system in place for people to produce results beyond their wildest dreams. All we've got to do is show them the product, give them a chance to see what's possible, make it accessible and then when people try it there's no going back you know i can't we're, very rarely do we find anybody that picks up living soil has something from the end of it to try tries it isn't blown away so yeah so education getting the message out there doing talks doing videos like this you know we'd encourage anybody just to get in touch phone email instagram we're here for you we're here to support you we're going to help you get through this it's not difficult if you've got the right advice it's literally a few things you need to learn um, so yeah that's it education 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 um, when it comes to our products and you know what we do as a, as, a, as a business i think we would like to maybe try and bring a few things in house bring our composting operation in house um, and to the point also we would go and grow our own inputs to make the compost ourselves have our own you know dairy cattle for example um, and yeah we like the idea that you know because we do feel free hands-on small batches 
um, having control of that, making sure therefore everything that goes out is the highest quality. Anything that could go wrong, it gets picked up. Um, yeah, so that's it. Bring things in house and just keep driving the quality and just keep driving the education. Or when you give my growing skills, I don't know, maybe you should ask the people who try the product really. <laughs> but uh, we do our best, shall we say. Um, I, I'll put it this way. I used to think I was a good grower, yeah. But now I've found living soil, the level's just gone up a whole other level. I, 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 you know, I'm not going to put an 8 or 9 or 10 out of 10 on it because I, it, you know, you do it for, are you satisfied? Are you satisfied with your results? And I'm 100% satisfied with my results now. Um, and looking back, I can now see how, although I thought I was getting good results, the bar is a lot higher than most people actually imagine. You can achieve a lot higher quality. You can reduce your costs. You can make it easier. Um, and yeah, I just, that's what I mean. I don't, I, I, I'd like to think I can grow as best as anybody but at the same time I don't rate myself because I'm not really doing anything other than keeping the soil wet yeah the soil grows the plants the plants grow themselves match the environment to the genetics and it's all gravy really so yeah I, I think I'm doing pretty well but I think everyone else is pretty well to be fair when they get the soil and they let it do the work you don't really need to be a grower you just got to be there to keep it wet